you've got to be good enough. But it, you, you know, there's a one of those premium spots in in all the the game of football is guys that can apply pressure to the quarterback. And uh, you know, you do that by scheme, or you do it by winning a one-on-one block with with a defensive lineman getting to the quarterback. Um, and also past history, you know, a number of our guys that we have in uh, especially the defensive side coaching right now, we're able to sign defensive ends in our past histories, and they've grown into defensive tackles, and they're athletic enough to do that uh, from a defensive end standpoint. Then you fast forward a year and a half, and now instead of being 240 pounds, they're 285 pounds with a very, very similar skill set. So, you know, there's some progression there that, that guys will continue to grow and, and mature and get bigger and move inside. And if you got a defensive end skill set that's playing inside now with defensive tackle size, then that improves your ability on defense, uh, just the athletic ability that you got, you know, on, on the 11 guys you have on the field. So, is there a year where you almost signed 10 defensive linemen? No, that may be a stretch. I mean, I, I, I can recall a year we, we signed eight, uh, but some of those guys were hybrid outside linebacker defensive end guys, you know. Hey, must it, how many of them do you ever move to offense as far as in the past? Oh, very, very, very few. Yeah, very few. There's been a, one guy that I recall that ended up being a really good player that moved over to play tight end. Um, there might have been an interior tackle that we signed that, that ended up playing, um, playing guard. You know, there's a kid we signed at Missouri years and years ago. Um, Brad Madison was his name. You know, he flipped back and forth and played a number of positions, and he finally stuck his senior year at defensive end and and had such a great year for us. So, you know, if you recruit athletes and you recruit guys that um, like the game of football and they like the process of what it takes to be a really good player, you're going to find a place for them on the field. And um, especially in this league. You know, up front, it's so important uh, on both sides of the line of scrimmage, you know, to find guys that can play. It's your last game at Missouri was dissecting these guys. Uh, just kind of what's your opinion of them now? Yeah, it's, you know, it was strange. You go into game planning and areas you wanted to attack, you know, going into that last game. And then 10 days later, I'm walking in with a Razorback shirt on. So, you know, you look at it through a different lens, but also, I didn't. I didn't. Once I got here, I didn't put much stock into you know what the game plan looked at in that last that last game. So you, you don't know what all was had gone on. Don't want to know. Uh, I was just excited to be around this team. Hey, Burry, am I, am I saying his name right? Burry. Kellen. Yeah. Uh, no. And initially, when I first met him, it was Burley, uh-huh. and then no, it's not. It's just like you're saying the word Burl. Burrow, okay. Yeah, Kellen Burrow. I can say that. You can. Um, what, what, what do you think about him? He's got good speed, and really in, in three weeks' time, he's starting to transform his body. Um, you know, he's a guy that can, can run and hit, and very explosive. Um, you know, he's got good instincts in just the football IQ part of just the football knowledge of, of how, to, how to play and understand the position and I'm excited about him. I'm glad he's here to go through the spring. So he's going to, uh, you know, be able to get a little step up. You know, having 15 practices underneath his belt. Coach, just this is from an outsider looking in, mm-hmm. but when I saw your defenses, the ability to rush the passer was was always a strength. Yeah, you look really our last two years. You know, this year I think the defense we had. We finished in the top 15 in the country in most most categories, uh, in, in a number of areas. But we were down in our sack total. Uh, but it was the best pass defensive group I've ever had. And uh, so I don't know that we had. Um, you know, it was all by personnel what we had scheme wise on some of the things that we called. Um, so it goes hand. You know, every year you're not going to. You know, I don't think I've ever been able to just consecutively back to back to back to back to back put together you know great sack totals but that doesn't mean that we haven't been a good defense but we're going to find ways to disrupt you know the timing we're going to find ways to try to create pressure on the quarterback feeling whether or not it's a sack but 
getting hits on the quarterback and also that they can feel the presence and the pressure uh, that they may throw off the timing or the you know the disruptive part of what we need to do up front on you know having pressure in the pocket maybe move them a little bit around that's so important because but Trino told me that it's of course he's a great yeah. scheme guy you bet. he said there's one thing that you do in football you know, he says, he says, if you, to win he says, you get the quarterback or you keep your quarterback from getting hit yeah. if you do those two things then you win there's a lot of value in that obviously is, yeah, is yeah. Uh, there's a lot of value in that and um you know, I know that the quarterbacks we're going to face week in and week out in this league, they're, they're, they're so good. And uh, so you got to find a way to disrupt what they – try to take away what they do best. Uh, and that's hard to do. Uh, but that's that's uh, kind of the name of the game. Well, if you watch the Super Bowl, yeah. that's what it came down to. So yeah. The first yeah. three quarters, they didn't hit the second.